Hi, everyone. I'm Norma Loeb, founder of the Lewy Body Dementia Resource Center. This video series has been created to bring awareness through firsthand experience of people living with Lewy Body Dementia, their caregivers, and through expert physicians. This crucial information will be shared with healthcare professionals, with families, and the general public to heighten awareness and to enable correct diagnosis. Please know we are here to help you every single day on our live helpline. I thank you for watching. The autonomic nervous system is a component of our, of our body that regulates temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, uh, and various other things. And what we see in dementia with Lewy bodies is that you can have a, a large fluctuation in heart rate and blood pressure. So it could be high one second, low the next. Um, and that tends to lead to a lot of problems because if it's high, you go, you go see a, a cardiologist or a primary care doctor and they'll give you medications to lower the blood pressure. But then that might cause a significantly lower blood pressure than intended. So it's very important to have a cardiologist that understands these fluctuations and that uh, the patient and the family has blood pressure cuffs at home and checks the blood pressure and heart rate on a regular basis to make sure that it's not dropping too low and not going too high. Because if it goes too low, you can pass out. If it goes too high, you can have a stroke. So you gotta be very, very careful with managing the medications that we use for blood pressure to not overdo it. And a lot of times patients will just come off of all their blood pressure medication because they really don't need it at this point, because the blood pressure tends to be lower than higher. It took me some time to learn how to say autonomic system. Uh, and I just think of auto, right? Things that happen in the body without any conscious thought. And that's what the system is. And um, uh, things uh, like uh, keeping temperature, right? Homostasis, they call it keeping a, a balanced temperature in your body, um, feeling uh, dizzy when you sit and stand is a change in your blood pressure. Um, at uh, physical therapy, I can actually uh, do a workout. They have a sled that I push with weights on it and I go back and forth in the gym with it. And at the end of it, they sat me down and took my blood pressure. And instead of going up, it went down. And that would be the autonomic system not working right. Uh, exercise, exertion should make blood pressure go up, but mine goes down. Um, when I stand, uh, I now have a habit of standing for a minute before I try walking, just because I can be lightheaded or dizzy. Um, I, my blood pressure changes dramatically when I stand. Um, uh, another thing with the autonomic system uh, is I can be sitting in a room, like last night it got cold, and uh, I, I'm sitting there sweltering, and my system is telling me I'm hot, and I actually feel a little perspiration or whatever, and I keep checking to see if I'm sweating, and I'm not really sweating. So my body's telling me I'm hot, but I'm actually cold because uh, the room is cold, because we didn't have the heat on. Then in the middle of the night, I'm freezing. So I can go from cold to hot. Um, this can also happen uh, with digestion and um, use of the bathroom. Uh, my first experience was uh, just having to urinate many times during the day regularly, and then getting up a lot at night to urinate. That's how it began. And then uh, I, I can go five, six, seven days with uh, diarrhea several times a day. And I'll take the diarrhea pills or whatever, and they don't do anything. And then uh, abruptly, I'll, I'll have that end. So whether your stool is diuretic or, or towards normal, there's just no telling. Her autonomic system was 
she's doing, it was just chaos. I mean, I noticed that when she went, when I first got there, it was like, she'd be hot and cold and constantly changing, trying to adjust the temperature. She'd be sweating. Was it her blood pressure definitely had uh, a mind of its own. Um, she normally had low blood pressure, but every once in a while it'd go up. And so and we were going to the cardiac doctor. Um, constipation was constant constant thing. Her friends even mentioned that she'd been talking about that for years, you know, um, and to the point where they're telling her, you know, stop it. We don't want to hear about it anymore, especially, you know, it's usually over lunch, <laughs> but um, no, anything that you, that the autonomic system is, was control controls was going haywire with her. It, she just couldn't understand why this system was that, you know, why is she feeling like this? Why is she feeling like that? And it just like, you know, it, and I, I, it was just always like, wow. Cause that's something that you don't, you know, I knew it wasn't, I knew it was part of her autonomic system. So yeah, that was haywire. Most every day. And it, it just, kind of blows my husband's mind <laughs> because especially if we're in the car I'll say oh you need to turn the air conditioning on and then I'll say it's too cold in here we need to put <laughs> the heater on <laughs> um it's not every day it's not all day it's intermittent but it does happen and as I have uh had more problems with constipation, it's always been an issue in my life, but it got worse. But my family doctor uh, put me on a medication and it's odd because the prescription doesn't really give a name. It just says stimulant and it's not like a laxative, but it keeps things moving. So I'm still not um, back to where I was at my best, but I'm further ahead than I was before the medication. So, but that definitely has been an issue for me. At nights now, he doesn't want to get up to go to the bathroom. Even if I call him, I wake him up, I say, come, let's go to the bathroom, I'll go with you. No, I don't want to go, I don't feel like it. But then in a few seconds later, he would wet the bed or wet, you know, he has pull-ups. So he doesn't have, the bed doesn't necessarily get wet, but he is wet. Um, he doesn't have any problems with incontinent of um, feces, just the urine. So during the day, he's pretty good. If we have to go out, I will uh, have him put a, a pamper on, except ex especially if we're going to be going somewhere for a few hours. And I'm not sure if we'll, there'll be a bathroom available, you know, so I'll make sure that he puts one on. At the beginning, he would give me problems. He wouldn't want to wear it. No, he doesn't, you know, because I guess he realizes that it is helpful to him. Maybe, I don't know if he realizes that, but he doesn't give me a problem. So the autonomic system is a crazy one to have to deal with with Louis body because it really can um, mask itself as other things. Like mom's nose will run all the time. And at night, she'll cough a lot because of extra saliva. So particularly through pandemic, when they say, oh, do you have a runny nose? Are you, uh, are you coughing? It's like, yes, mom's doing that, but I know it's not COVID, it's Lewy body. <laughs> so uh, knowing that it's related to the system's not working well. I'll never forget the first time when somebody in the support group said, oh yes, the nose runs all the time. Ah, that's good, now I know everybody. The constipation is the hardest thing though, I think. And mom talks about having had that for a long time in her life. So she really didn't equate it to Louis body. But I think it probably was one of the earlier signs as well in her body. And so it's really all the time trying to find the balance between giving her Maalox, not giving her Maalox. If her stool is too soft, then she doesn't have control and can't make it to the bathroom. And then she's upset because she has to be cleaned up. But if her stool is too hard, then she can't. She can get blocked up. We had a hospital stay for a bowel impactment. And um, going in, the 
the emergency people, I kept saying, I know her bowels impacted. Well, when was her last bowel movement? I said, she had a little bit yesterday, but it was runny. And, not, and I know how much she said, please check for her bowel impactment. When they finally did the ultrasound, they said, oh yeah, she has a bowel impactment. <laughs> so coming home from the hospital, um, she had a lot continents after that and getting that rebalanced really a lot out of her so those systems trying to keep them balanced it's not easy it's it's kind of a game to try to balance it out um but knowing that it's part of the part of what's going on can help he was always always cold and his neurologist explained to me that um it's like an oven when you open the oven door his capillaries are open so the heat is escaping and that was I mean I had no idea and it makes sense to me now when I see people in the middle of a sweltering day in the summer with jackets on I know that they have dementia because um, uh, that is you know again something I learned a huge sign um, he is always cold um, yes, uh, as the disease has progressed, um, there is a lot of constipation. Um, and uh, I, I've, I've noticed that. And the constipation would also cause a lot of ag agitation. Um, he would get very angry. And his, um, he would, his violence at times, um, in retrospect, was exacerbated by his discomfort. Um, and uh, it, it made sense to me um, later on that that is, was possibly why he would get um, uh, aggressive, because he couldn't articulate that he was constipated and uncomfortable. Luckily, I knew before all this <laughs> what the autonomic nervous system is which is the part of the nervous system that controls all the things we don't think about, such as our breathing, our temperature, our uh, ability to digest food, our ability to eliminate toxins, our ability to sweat and go to the bathroom, all of those things, our blood pressure. And we found that Lewy body dementia affected just about everything. Uh, even when he could still go for a nice walk around the block with his walker, we could go out on, on the most pleasant spring day. And of course, he walked extremely slowly, so he wasn't working up a sweat. And he would be home, and he would be soaking wet with sweat, reacting as if it was 110 degrees outside. And really, his, his system just was dysregulated or he would get very cold at other times he often felt very dizzy when he stood up and so uh the uh neurologist actually instructed me to let him eat salty foods potato chips all of that because his blood pressure was low uh and would plummet when he stood up um and digestion was always a problem. Constipation is a huge issue to deal with for years with this disease. And um, I know it's an issue for people with Parkinson's, so it, it is absolutely an issue for people with Lewy body dementia. One of the really downsides to Lewy body dementia is the, um, the incontinence and, uh, and particularly the um, uh, the bowel syndrome, which is either very loose bowels or constipation. In, in Nikki's case, uh, there, there, there was a fear of bowel movements that, that couldn't be controlled. And what it caused initially is Nikki to actually stop eating. He didn't want to eat because he was afraid that that would trigger something. When I finally was able to convince him that no, that that was not the, the case, this was the disease that was going to, to actually have this happen, whether or not he ate, um, you know, we were careful about the diet, but but it, he was then convinced to eat and, and everything was fine, uh, fine, fine as far as it went. 
it still was happening. There were still bowel movements that were uncontrollable. Um, what ultimately the uh, our doctor came up with, which did work, was a modium every other day, which seemed to then control the bowel movements, but to a to a more or less um, manageable degree. But that was that was a real. It's a real issue, and it's something people don't like to talk about, but it's there. Uh, I have problems with constipation. Um, it happens often. Um, uh, I'm cold often, very, very often, where my hands are like ice. And uh, my uh, my uh, cardiologist the other day said that's nothing to be concerned about. But I am constantly going to the thermostat. My wife is going to the thermostat. She turns it one way. I turn it the other way. And um, so there's definitely temperature changes within myself, uh, especially in the winter. It's very, very difficult. The cold weather is hard for me. People with Lewy body disease and Parkinson's can get autonomic dysfunction. This means part of their um, nerve system may not work properly. And certain muscles, whether it's bladder muscles or muscles in their colon or muscles in their esophagus and swallowing all can be affected. So there is a lot of constipation. And constipation can also be caused by drugs they're taking. So the medications can cause constipation especially patients who have those Parkinson's features where they may be using levodopa type drugs can cause constipation. Some of the drugs we use for the behavioral symptoms may cause GI side effects. In general, for any patient with constipation, number one, they need to drink fluids, water. They need to drink water. They don't wanna drink water because then they have to urinate frequently. Water, fiber. So fruits, vegetables, prune juice, or I'm a big advocate of prune juice. Um, things like flaxseed and bran. To be careful about using fiber, even things like um, fiber, like Miralax type fiber, if you're not drinking fluids, because if you just take fiber and you're not drinking the water, you make cement. So they need to drink fluids. Um, and then there are all kinds of over-the-counter laxatives, stool softeners that can be tried. Again, it's gonna be trial and error, but they should talk to their healthcare provider about figuring out which is the best one for them to try initially. But one of my suggestions is you have to give everything a try. Don't say, well, I took this Monday, it didn't work, so now I'm gonna try a different one on Tuesday. And that didn't work. So on Wednesday, I'm going to try a different medication. I just had this experience with a patient, not with Lewy body, where it didn't work fast enough for him. So he kept going from one medication to the other until he had the opposite effect. So stick with it. Give things time to work. Activity will also help being physical. So as people become more sedentary, they're going to be constipated also. You need to move things around and move things through. So constipation, incontinence, another problem. So bladder muscle dysfunction and the incontinence. Problem is that a lot of the medications that are used for incontinence have side effects as well, which can include sedation and confusion. So the, you know those have to be weighed as well, right? So everything is a risk-benefit ratio and what I like to call shared decision-making where you get you talk about, well, yes, we can try to treat this symptom you're having with this drug, but you might get this side effect. So be aware, let us know. So it's weighing the risks and benefits.